Would you know if something was wrong with your heart? There aren't always obvious indicators that something is wrong with your heart. The chest grasp followed by a tumble to the floor seen in movies isn't the norm. Some cardiac symptoms aren't felt in the chest, and it's not always easy to figure out what's wrong. Hello, this is Scope Care, and we're here with another video about early heart disease signs you should know about. If you're interested in learning more about various health conditions, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of new uploads. If you're not sure, get it checked out. That's advice from Dr. Charles Chambers, head of Penn State Hershey Heart and Vascular Institute's Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory. According to Dr. Vincent Buffalino, an American Heart Association representative, this is especially true if you are 60 or older, overweight or have diabetes, high cholesterol, or high blood pressure. He says the more risk factors you have, the more concerned you should be about anything heart-related. When a section of the heart muscle doesn't get enough blood, it causes a heart attack, also known as a myocardial infarction. The longer the heart muscle goes without treatment to restore blood flow, the more damage it sustains. The most common cause of heart attack is coronary artery disease, CAD. Another less common reason is a strong spasm or sudden contraction of the coronary artery, which can block blood flow to the heart muscle. Keep an eye out for the following issues. Number one, discomfort in the chest. It's the most prevalent symptom of a heart attack. You may feel discomfort, tightness, or pressure in your chest if you have a blocked artery or are suffering a heart attack. Chambers explains everyone has a different phrase for that experience. Some people describe it as though an elephant is sitting on them while others describe it as a pinching or burning sensation. The sensation normally lasts for several minutes. It can happen when you're at rest or doing anything physically strenuous. It's probably not your heart if the pain is only temporary or if it's a region that hurts worse when you touch or push on it, according to Chambers. You should still consult a doctor about it. Call 911 if the symptoms are more severe and don't go away within a few minutes. Keep in mind that you might have cardiac problems, including a heart attack, without experiencing chest pain. This is especially prevalent among women. Number two, nausea, indigestion, heartburn, or stomach pain. During a heart attack, some people experience these symptoms. According to Chambers, they may even vomit. Women are more likely than men to report this type of symptom. Of course, you can have an upset stomach for a variety of reasons unrelated to your heart. After all, it could just be something you ate. You should be warned, however, that it can also occur during a heart attack. So if you're experiencing these symptoms and you're at risk for heart problems, see a doctor right away, especially if you're experiencing any of the other symptoms on this list. Number three, arm pain. Pain radiating down the left side of the body is another common symptom of a heart attack. It almost invariably begins in the chest and spreads outward, Chambers adds. However, I've encountered patients without arm pain who ended up having heart attacks. Number four, you're feeling lightheaded or dizzy. Many factors can cause you to lose your balance or feel faint for a brief moment. You may not have had enough to eat or drink, or you may have stood up too quickly. However, if you get shaky and experience chest pain or shortness of breath, see a doctor immediately. It could indicate that your blood pressure has decreased because your heart isn't pumping as efficiently as it should, Buffalino explains. Number five, pain in the throat or jaw. Throat or jaw pain is unlikely to be caused by the heart on its own. It's more than likely due to a musculoskeletal condition, a cold or a sinus problem. It could be an indication of a heart attack if you have discomfort or pressure in the center of your chest that radiates to your throat or jaw. To make sure everything is okay, dial 911 and seek medical help. Number six, you're easily exhausted. Make an appointment with your doctor immediately if you suddenly feel tired or breathless after doing something you've never had trouble doing before, such as climbing the stairs or carrying groceries from the car. These kinds of huge shifts are more important to us than every small ache and pain you're experiencing, adds Buffalino. Excessive wariness or inexplicable weakness, which can last for days, might be a sign of heart disease, particularly in women. Number seven, snoring. It's natural to snore a little when sleeping. Sleep apnea can be detected by unusually loud snoring that sounds like gasping or choking. 
which occurs when you briefly stop breathing multiple times during a sleeping session. Your heart is put under additional strain due to this interruption. Your doctor can determine whether you require a sleep study to diagnose you with this disease. If this is the case, you may require a CPAP machine to help you breathe more easily while you sleep. Number 8. Sweating A cold sweat that appears out of nowhere could indicate a heart attack. If this occurs in conjunction with any of the other symptoms, dial 911 to go to a hospital as soon as possible. Do not attempt to drive by yourself. Number 9. A cough that won't go away This isn't always an indicator of a cardiac problem. However, if you have heart disease or know you're at risk, you should be more concerned about the possibilities. It could be an indication of heart failure if you have a persistent cough that produces white or pink mucus. When the heart is unable to keep up with the body's demands, blood leaks back into the lungs. Inquire with your doctor about the source of the cough. Number 10. You have swollen legs, feet, and ankles. This could indicate that your heart isn't pumping blood as well as it should be. Blood backs up in the veins when the heart can't pump fast enough, which causes bloating. Heart failure can make it more difficult for the kidneys to eliminate excess water and sodium from the body, which also results in bloating. Number 11. Irregular heartbeat. It's normal for your heart to race when you're frightened or excited, or for it to add or skip a beat every now and then. Tell your doctor if you feel your heart is beating out of time for more than a few seconds, or if it happens frequently. Most of the time, it's triggered by something simple like too much caffeine or not getting enough sleep, Buffalino explains. However, it may occasionally indicate the presence of a condition known as atrial fibrillation, which necessitates medical attention. Before we go into the diagnosis, please like and share this video with your friends and family to educate them about heart disease. Diagnosis A physical examination will be performed by your doctor, who will also inquire about your personal and family medical history. The tests you'll need to diagnose your heart illness are determined by your doctor's suspicions. An electrocardiogram is a test that can be used to diagnose cardiac problems in addition to blood tests and a chest x-ray. An electrocardiogram, ECG, is a painless and rapid examination that monitors the electrical signals in your heart. It can detect irregular cardiac rhythms. An ECG can be performed while you're at rest or while you're exercising. Holter monitoring is a method of keeping track of your heart rate. A Holter monitor is a portable ECG gadget that you wear for 24 to 72 hours to record your heart rhythm. Holter monitoring is used to detect heart rhythm issues that aren't detected by a standard ECG. An echocardiogram is a non-invasive test that uses sound waves to provide detailed images of the structure of your heart. It depicts how your heart pumps blood and beats. A stress test involves increasing your heart rate through exercise or medication while performing cardiac tests and imaging to see how your heart reacts. Catheterization of the heart involves a short tube, sheath, that is inserted into a vein or artery in your leg, groin, or arm during this examination. The sheath is then inserted with a hollow, flexible, and longer tube, guide catheter. Your doctor carefully threads the catheter through the artery until it reaches your heart, using x-ray images on a monitor as a guide. The pressure in your heart's chambers can be measured by injecting dye during cardiac catheterization. The dye is visible on an x-ray which allows your doctor to check for issues by seeing how the blood flows through your heart, arteries, and valves. A computerized tomography CT scan of the heart requires you to recline on a table within a donut-shaped machine for a heart CT scan. The machine's x-ray tube moves around your body collecting images of your heart and chest. A magnetic resonance imaging MRI of the heart creates comprehensive images of your heart using a magnetic field and computer-generated radio waves. Overall, Heart disease and heart attack risk can be increased by a variety of factors, including your health, lifestyle, age, and family history. These are referred to as risk factors. About half of all Americans have at least one of the three major heart disease risk factors, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or smoking. Some risk factors, such as your age or family history, are uncontrollable. You can, however, take actions to reduce your risk by altering factors under your control. Following these steps will reduce your risk of experiencing future health problems after a heart attack. Physical exertion. Talk to your healthcare provider about the things you do daily in your life and at work. Following a heart attack, your doctor may advise you to reduce your employment, travel, and sexual activity for some time. In addition to taking prescription medications, lifestyle changes such as eating a healthier diet, increasing physical activity, stopping smoking, and managing stress can help improve your heart health and quality of life. 
Inquire with your doctor about enrolling in a cardiac rehabilitation program to assist you in making these lifestyle changes. Cardiac rehabilitation is a crucial treatment for anyone recovering from a heart attack, heart failure, or another heart disease that required surgery or medical attention. That concludes today's video. Please subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified of new uploads. Thank you from all of us here at Scope Care, and we'll see you in the next video.